Well, 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 what do you know? McCall's just dropped their fall collection. And if this is any indication of what we're about to see, I am excited. Um, so let's get right to it. Shop new arrivals. Okay, chic for fall, totally. Look book. Okay, I get it. Shop new arrivals. <laughs> Take me to the patterns. Okay, good. We're starting off with the one from the little website banner. And this is also the one they posted on social media too. So I literally have not seen any other patterns other than this photo. So again, we're sticking with the names. Um, I don't know that anyone is really remembering these names. They're also kind of random. But this is the Wythe. Wythe. Um, we've still got the higher price point, even on launch day when normally they would be the $3.99. They're only down to 14 bucks. So I really do think this is the new normal, guys. I know that they're still on sale at Joanne and Hobby Lobby. But my understanding of how that works is that there's kind of like a contract. Um, and I just wonder when that contract expires, if it will be renewed at the same, you know, with all the same details. And so only time will tell for that. But um, I think we're just going to have to get used to, if you don't live near a Joanne or Hobby Lobby or not even in the United States, that you're going to be paying 15 bucks for a McCall's pattern. Okay, so let's look at the pattern. Cowl neck pullover knit top with sleeve and length variations. First of all, I'm obsessed with this kind of neckline and I don't know the name of it. It's kind of like a funnel, right? A funnel neck, but also a little bit of a cowl. Um, it reminds me a lot of the toaster sweater, but kind of more elevated. The toaster sweater is a great, like, I don't want to say plain. Plain has such a negative connotation to it, but it is sort of regular. <laughs> That's not much better of a word. This one, I don't know, feels a lot chicer to me because of the drop shoulder, because of the way that this sleeve is drafted um, and a little cup. I don't know, it just feels like a little bit extra pizzazz, but there are always other versions. So we've also got this extreme uh, flare sleeve. Now we went through this, what, last year when everybody got their sleeves in their soup at lunchtime and then everyone was like, that's so annoying. I'm never going to make those sleeves again. So I don't know why they're drafting these sleeves still, but I guess this is, would be a version of the sweater that you wear when you know you're not going to eat or like reach for anything at all because you know it will get stuck in <laughs> whatever it is you're reaching for. Um, this one's like a little bit more of a sporty vibe. I don't, is this an actual waistband? I'm not sure. We'll look at the line drawings here in a second. But I mean, this look, the cropped length is so good. So good. Um, the sleeve looks great, I think. Um, it looks even a little long for her, and I'm assuming she's pretty tall, so you might want to check the length, but I just love the neckline. I just, I, I don't know. I love everything about this. With some high-waisted jeans, um, it would look super, super chic. Here's a look at the back. Really great. There's the cover. All right, yeah, and there is a waistband on C. So it is, you know, it is definitely going to give you more of a sportswear type of vibe. But super cute. And you get to look at how this sleeve is uh, drafted a little bit too. There's like actual pleats there, not just like shove this big, large sleeve into a little itty bitty cuff and hope that your gathers are even like they normally are. <laughs> Am I right? Have you ever tried to make one of those before where it's just like, you know, you have a... A circle that's like, I don't know, eight inches uh, around and then they're like, you have this little itty bitty four inch cuff and they're like, you know, stretch the cuff to fit the sleeve and you're like, oh god, like, <laughs> this is not gonna go well. Okay, yardage. Cotton knit, sweater knit, velour and velvet. 
Velvet and velour, I think, for the one with the waistband, for sure. Cotton knit. I mean, I guess this one for a cotton knit. Sweater knits for these two, for sure. This is just giving me more of like a tracksuit vibe already. That's why I would relegate that one for the velour. But it comes in alphanumeric sizing and all the sizes are in one. So this was another big thing that I think I pointed out in the last, maybe in the Vogue, I don't know, one of them, where if they're going to charge, you know, 15 bucks for a pattern, you have to offer all the sizes in one pattern because there are a lot of us who were like in between uh, the smaller size and the larger size range in the big four. And so a lot of times I have to buy both sizes. And whenever it was like, you know, $1.99, $3, it was no big deal, but I'm not paying $30 that feels unfair, you know, just because I happen to be a certain size. Um, so I like that this one is, has all the sizes in one. So I, I have to grade between a few of them. I don't have to worry about it having my size or not. That said, the size range is not, you know, exceptional. It only goes down to an extra small and then up to a 2X. So, you know, anybody that is smaller than that or larger than that, um, you know, is SOL. But here are your fabric requirements, not a lot, which is great. You can get sweater knits and cotton knits for, I mean, really affordably these days. So this would be a really inexpensive make, um, even with the uh, more expensive patterns. We are getting a bust, a finished garment bust measurement. So you can see there's kind of a lot of ease in here. Um, if I made the medium, I would have, you know, just about three inches of, of ease. So that would be nice and comfortable for sure. And then I guess it just flares straight. Yeah, it kind of goes straight down from there. So I probably have to grade out for the hip. But that's okay. I'm used to it. No big deal. All right. Cute. Good start. Wife. Okay, next up, we've got a hoodie, the Hudson. The Hudson, okay. So this is giving me very, very strong um, Southern, oh, what is the name of that brand? Um, like Vineyard Vines vibe. Imagine like being on a sailboat and like not actually on a yacht, but like imagine your dream life of being on a yacht and you're like, you know, out weathering the elements and you want to still look really chic. And so you have this pullover that you can, <laughs> that you can throw on. Think about like, yeah, brands like Vineyard Vines and Polo and stuff like that. Hudson's giving me strong vibes for that. Pullover fleece tops. View A has contrast quilting and bias binding. View B has elastic hems. So I don't know if this, I'm assuming that in the instructions they will show you how to quilt this, which I got to tell you guys, I got a pattern once that had like a quilted aspect to it. You have to have a, um, a walking foot. There's really no way around it. And if you've ever like actually quilted before, like a blanket, um, I'm sure you're familiar with just, you know, how the anatomy of how all that works. This is the exact same way. But we've got a little half zip, a little stand collar. Um, I like how the sleeve is split in two also. So this is all one block and then this is all one block. You've got a kangaroo pocket and then bias binding on fleece. Now that is an interesting concept. I wonder if they will give us fabric um, a, a different fabric for that because you wouldn't want to bias bind in fleece. You would want to bias bind in some kind of like cotton jersey. But yes, okay, little half zip. This one has elastic at the waist and the wrist. Also has a hood and well, I, I do want to point out that the shape of the hood looks really good on this one. Um, a lot of times or at least I've made a couple of jackets with hoods before. And when the hood starts down here, I don't know, it tends to just like blow off my head, especially when there's no drawstring in here. So I like that this one comes up and over and like encases your entire head. <laughs> so all you can see really is your face. Um, okay, that's it on that. And then this one 
just is like the first one without the well actually it's like the second one without the hood is more like it so a little bit more plain none of the contrast none of the quilting just a fleece pullover And I wonder if this is even fleece. This feels like some kind of water repellent fabric to me. But I love a little turtleneck underneath. That's a great little way to style it. It's very boxy. It's not fitted. I mean, it is fitted through the bust, but that's really it. Here's the back. This also feels... So far, the past two patterns, I mean, we're only in too deep, but the past two patterns also feel very quarantine appropriate. You know what I mean? Like so far, it's nothing like super fancy where you're like, yeah, right. I'm not going to wear this until 2024. This is also a learn to sew pattern. So lots of really great tips in there on how to sew this, including, what is it? An elastic hem, a zipper, and hood. So it's going to talk you through how to make those things, which is great. Yep, and then there's our line drawings. Okay, let's look at fabric. So fleece, sweatshirt fleece, minky fleece, mm. and then yeah, okay, so the contrast is some kind of water repellent um, fabric. So they're recommending nylon ripstop, but I swear I've seen, maybe in Joanne, I don't know where, but I swear I've seen some places that are selling pre-quilted kind of fabric like that, like, like slippery nylon fabric, which would be a great hack because then you wouldn't have to worry about quilting it yourself. So if you can get your hands on some of that, that would be a really, um, really cool look and a cool, cheat. Um, okay, so this one does come in two different size ranges. That's unfortunate. You need an exposed zipper, twill ribbon. Three quarters of a yard though. So that must be for like some little, maybe the zipper has a little like ribbon accent on it. Yeah, there's little ribbon pulls on there. Um, let's see if we can help much. Yeah, that is what that little ribbon is for. Okay. And then three to quarter yards of double fold bias tape. So they're having you buy pre-made bias tape that is probably woven. Oops. Yeah, you can't really zoom in more than that. Yeah, that looks like the package stuff to me. So also look at the, I mean, I know it's, we're not all great at sewing bias binding, but we can see the underside of theirs is not perfect. It is a nine out of 10 though. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. And then you need your elastic. Okay. One inch elastic too. Nice beefy elastic. I like that. All right. So for your fabric requirements, you would need uh, one and three quarters, let's just call it two yards for the like bottom half, and then one yard for the top half. So that's three yards to make that contrasted version. And then to make the other, this one is the one with the hood, just under two yards. And then two yards for the one without. Well, that makes me question that. Okay, the hood is, is C. So this is the hooded version and this is the kind of plain version. All right, finished bust measurements. Again, very roomy. All right, Hudson, cute. All right, next up, we've got a cute little, I'm assuming a crop top called Beverly. All right, so Beverly has a wrap neckline with, is this like a fold over? It looks separated up here. 
Um, and then your bodice looks like it has grown on sleeves, so it's a perfect application for stripes. And then your sleeves are all gathered into this cuff, and then your uh, bodice is um, sewn into this waistband. And then the waistband stops at about the high hip on this one. Here's another version with a big voluminous sleeve again just don't plan on eating anything don't plan on reaching for anything just keep your hands by your sides when you wear this <laughs> um this version i don't how is that different than the first version hard to say maybe something with the sleeve is different but there she is i don't really know that this goes with this it's like two different people. This feels a little bit more mature and this feels very, very young, but okay. And then, yeah, this is an actual collar piece. So that's really interesting. But look at what this is doing to her body. It is like, bam, bam, bam. Creating that really flattering um, hourglass. Oh, obviously, um, the other version is the one without the collar. Okay. I'm glad that they made the one with the collar because if I would have looked at this um, line drawing, I would have been like, that is so weird. It looks like a bib, like, no thank you. But seeing her version, it actually is quite, it's a little more, bit more subtle than the line drawing would indicate. But this has got to be a breeze to sew. I mean, you don't even have a sleeve or anything. You barely have like, you know, a neckline. Um, the hardest part is gathering it into this little do do hickey here. Like I was explaining before, eight inches gathered into <laughs> four inches or whatever it is. Okay, yardage, cotton knit, sweater knit or rib knit. Oh yes, I'm here for this in a rib knit for sure. For sure. This in a rib knit would be stunning and so comfortable. Can you imagine? No notions and all caps, none. <laughs> this is actually numbered sizing. So six to 14 and then 16 to 24. Here are your fabric requirements. And then no finished garment measurements, which for this one, I mean, really the waist is important and that's about it you just don't want to make the bodice too too big um, but it would be very hard to make this bodice too small so beverly cute all right now are we getting into the dresses oh good my favorite part all right astoria okay astoria is giving me a very like romantic vibe very um throwback i don't want to say what's the victorian-ish maybe they describe it as a fit and flare princess seam coat with high neck or v variations also is this supposed to be with the waist because her waist is way up here And then you've just got all these buttons. And this is also made out of a velvet. I mean, that is a serious coat. So you've got this funnel neck here. Here's the princess seam. And then there's also princess seams in the quote unquote skirt of the coat. Slim line sleeve. This one has the open V, which is a little less period costume but I mean, the length of this, the high neck, all the buttons, yeah, I'm getting a strong like costume vibe on this. And yeah, I feel like this is an inch or two too low. Here it is opened, maybe. Oh no, there we go. Here it is opened. Oh, they put it with like a Led Zeppelin shirt. Oh, I didn't even notice that she had like dark red lipstick too. Um, and 
And maybe it's not velvet. This might be some kind of wool, actually, now that I'm looking at it closer. Yeah, I mean, they tried to make it like rock and roll chic, I guess. It's just, I have no need for a coat like this. But look at the lining, really pretty. The buttons, though, this is one thing that's always bothered me about McCall's, is they just have you sew the buttons. Like, I would, on a coat like this, you really need, like, bound buttonholes. So, I wish that they would have more of that, but I get that that's more of an advanced technique, so they wouldn't maybe want to flaunt that too much, but the sleeve looks really great on her. The shape looks really great through here, so it looks like it's drafted really well fit wise. Here are our line drawings. So you can see different lengths, uh, two different necklines, and then all the same sleeve. There's also pockets, which I think we missed. Yardage. Oh, I can't even imagine. Um, wool blends, tweed, gabardine, and then lining. 12 buttons for the longer length and then eight buttons for the shorter length. Two different sizes. And then, well, I mean, well, okay. So A is a shorter version, about three yards there. Um, the lining you only need. <coughs> so is the sleeve not lined? That must be it, an unlined sleeve. Um, oh, no, 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 that's interfacing. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. So the lining is here, so fully lined, great. And then, yeah, four and a quarter, four and three quarters for coat B, and then four and an eighth, and four and an eighth for C. So, yeah, a lot of wool fabric. And then here's your finished bust measurement. Um, probably, let's see, I don't really make a 12 or 14 in McCall's. So that would give me two and a half to four and a half um, inches of ease in the bust. So pretty close fitting, pretty close fitting. All right, that's Astoria. Okay, next up we've got, I think these are the dresses. So only one coat for fall, wow, okay. Um, <clears throat> this is the Mrs. Dress and Belt called Marcy. Marcy is a, oh, okay, um, interesting, but bust start. Let's look at that a little bit closer. Only one, This there's not one over here. And then you've got your patch pockets. I think this is a matter of the fabric choice. I don't know what this is, but it looks like it was a pain in the rear. Um, but you've got your patch pocket with top stitching, even your collar is top stitched. But man, look how pretty that is in there. They do have some great seamstresses. Um, and then you also have possibly a dart coming into here. Oh no, there's the dart. You can see it faintly. <clears throat> they did little shell buttons, but you have these little angled pockets and like a um, kind of a fitted skirt. So kind of a take on like a trench coat, safari dress type thing. Then this version, whoa, <laughs> I don't know about this in like a full on ditzy print, but okay. <laughs> um, these have patch pockets with a flap and then also this like belt um, with large belt carriers. And then there it is without the patch pockets and without the belt also. Oh, knee-high snakeskin boots. Okay. Yeah, I mean, um, gosh, what do I think about this? Yeah, this fabric is just no bueno. Um, you, have, you do have a full yoke, a full set-in, slim sleeve. So it's like fitted and tailored and kind of, is that actually, is that leather? That might be pleather. Which in that case, I, oh gosh, I kind of see what they were going for, but 
Hmm. I don't know. Pocketed shirt dress with length and sleeve variations and C has belt. Oh, and this one also has patch pockets in the back too. I I think that in a denim, you know, imagine like a heavier than chambray, but not quite bottom weight denim. Um, this would be outstanding. Super, super cute. In a leather, yeah, maybe it's just this particular color of leather that I'm not feeling. Um, suede, something like that. I can see it all in those kinds of fabrics. Yeah, faux leather, denim, baby cord, cotton blends. Okay, fine. I see that. And it could be really, really chic. Yeah, unfortunately, I think this is a case of the, the test or sample garment just not photographing great. Um... But I would make a denim one in a heartbeat. Um, all you need is 10 buttons. Two different sizes. So annoying. Because, yeah. Even more expensive than the tops. Um, so, if I'm being honest with myself, what I would do... They don't even have the overlap size, which is... They used to do that, where it was like 6 to 16 and then 16 to 24. Um, but I would buy the larger size range and then just figure out the bodice because I fall in the larger size range, hip and waist. Um, it would just be the bodice that I would need to fiddle with a little bit. So, <clears throat> and I'm only one size off from the smallest bodice here. So, but here's your fabric requirements. Oh, look, bust line and hip line measurements. So, let's see. Yeah, it would only be like two inches off, which sounds like a lot, but in a bodice, you know, you have your side seams, and so it's really only a quarter of an inch. Wait, one, two, three, four. So two inches divided by four is half an inch. So it's only taking half an inch off. You could fudge that technically in the um, seam allowances. So just take it in a little bit more um, would be pretty easy to do. But that's for me. If you're like down here, 38, 36, like if you're more of an exaggerated like um, shape than I am, or if your bust is like, you know, two or three sizes bigger than your hip. I don't, yeah. I think that that's definitely, I, I'm, I'm all here for them charging whatever it is that they want to charge for their patterns. But when it comes to value, as you compare them against what else is available in the market, like indie patterns that include all the sizes in one price, like, you know, like the value is just not there. Especially too, because all the indie patterns at this price point are offering like sew alongs and you know step-by-step -step tutorials and so I don't know maybe if they came in at under ten dollars like you know the nine <clears throat> nine fifty nine ninety nine price point that would be a better pill to swallow I don't know um, but here's the hip measurement so I'm normally like a 20 or 22 maybe. Um, so yeah, I would be grading out 16, 18, 20 is probably what I would do. And then I would fudge the um, seam allowances within that to make it even larger than that, especially because it's a fitted skirt. So you don't want it to be like, you know, too big. Actually, I probably would just change the skirt, <laughs> if I'm being honest. I don't know, though. I don't know. Anyways, I digress. Um, okay, so that is Marcy. Okay, here's another cutie. Brooklyn. This is another pleather dress. Stretch pleather, too, I believe. I thought this was a laundromat. 
Um, okay, so she's got a half zipper with a cool little pull. Then sewn in, set in sleeve, very fitted, also very long, um, this sleeve. So check that. But then that's it, which is what makes it so great for fabrics like leather because there's just no seams. There's just no seams at all. So let's see what the... You've also got this turtleneck version, which I'm assuming you would not make in stretch pleather. That seems so constricting and very like S&M, which if you're into that, okay, good for you. No judgment here at all. But to me, I would feel like I'm being choked, which again, some people are into, <laughs> but not me. Oh gosh. Okay, now you've got the zip with the turtleneck and then the short sleeve, which is also cute. Oh man, this doesn't look good. Okay, so there's no center back seam. This is just way too long waisted. I mean, <clears throat> from what I'm looking at here, it's got to be like an inch and a half, two inches, maybe more of excess fabric in the center back. So definitely check that. Oh man, that's too bad because you know, it, when there aren't any waist seams, when there aren't any vertical seams, there's nowhere to do shaping. Um, so if your body has any kind of, you know, shape to it, you know, it's just really hard to do. So muslin, muslin, muslin. Mm. The length is also a midi length. Oh, it's learned to sew. Oh, I hate that because like <clears throat> people that are drawn to picking up and learn to sew are beginner sewists and they might not see the same things that an experienced person sees when they look at, you know, the photos and stuff. So they would make that and then it would be like, it would look like it does on her, which isn't bad. And, you know, most people are not going to notice the things that a sewist notices, but still... You, if you make it, you still want it to look, you know, exceptional. But you would learn how to attach a turtleneck, stretch knit fit, and exposed zippers. Um, okay, yep, there it is. No seams. Pretty plain, but whenever you um, make it out of these fabrics, uh, rib knit interlock cotton knit and novelty knit, 50% um, uh, cross grain stretch, which normally they ask for like 30%. So this is a pretty stretchy fitted fabric that they're looking for. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, or you could just size up if your fabric isn't that stretchy. But all you need is this little exposed zipper, separate sizes, um, here's your fabric requirements. Not too, too bad considering it's all one piece without any seams to break it up. And the front and back are cut on the fold. So not too bad at all, actually. And then no finished garment measurements. All right. Brooklyn. It's cool. If you found the right fabric and worked on fit, it, it's really cool and it would be a breeze to sew. So you spend all your time on the fitting and then when you get that right, it just whoop, 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 and you're done <laughs> sewing it. Okay, next up, cutie little skirt called Tillery. I mean, that's really not something I would think of in terms of fabrication matched with a pattern, but it actually looks really, really cool, especially with this like see-through rib knit bra showing situation. Very chic. And she seems to love it. I really do feel like when the models put on the clothes, you can tell whether they think they look ridiculous or not. And I think she would actually go out in New York City and look like a million bucks. I think it's cute. 
and I think this is some kind of like velvet. So here it is in more of like a springtime fabrication, but this is like a ruffle on a ruffle on a tear on a ruffle. So there's kind of a lot going on. <clears throat> and then you have the four tiered version. This has got to take a ton of fabric. That's the same photo, right? Here it is from the back. I mean, just really simple, but really cute. Again, how it's styled really does make all the difference. So kudos to them for that. Here are our line drawings. I do wonder, because <clears throat> this length, this ankle length is not... I mean, you have to wear like a super high heel in order for this to be super flattering. So I wonder if you took, you know, three or four inches off each tier and shortened it um, to where it would be like maybe just below the knee or even like mid shin. It's got to be pretty easy to do. I just wonder because I think that this version is knee length which I think is too short and I don't know. I don't know how that would look on um, with just the two tiers. Although I'm assuming all the tiers are the same length. So that if, if there are only two of them, one, two, that's what this is. One, two, you leave off these ruffles and you would have like a knee length version, but I like the three tiers. Maybe that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so what if you did like one, two, and then added like a short little pep one? Would that be weird? I don't know. Um, okay, cotton blends, lawn and taffeta. Wait, what? I thought for sure that was like some kind of velvet. Is this taffeta? Let's go to one of the other pictures. I don't know what that is. It's too lightweight and drapey to be taffeta. What are the other ones? Cotton blends and lawn? No, no, no. This has got to be wrong. This is not right. This is definitely some kind of like novelty knit something or another. There's no way that's taffeta or lawn, or a cotton blend. I think this is wrong. Um, one and a half yard of one inch elastic, okay. So two different sizes, okay. Um, three yards of fabric. The lining, I think, is just for the waistband. And then your, uh, well, let's see, what order do they go in? A is the shortest, then B, then C. Okay, so A, wonder what it is about A that you can't even make it out of 45. What could be so big of a pattern piece that it, you couldn't make A, but you could make B or C? It must be, have something to do with that ruffle. Huh, interesting. And then, yeah, five and a quarter yards for C. I knew it would be a lot. Also, C has two yards of lining. So maybe that first tier is lined or like a partial lining through. Well, it wouldn't be that way. It'd be the opposite. So the bottom tier, whatever the longest tier is, that is how much it's lined. So that's interesting. Why do you have to do that? When you have all the tiers, what do you need it to be lined for? Huh, that's very interesting. <clears throat> Your hip line finished garment measurement. This makes it seem like it's really fitted. <clears throat> Which, I don't know. I think that all of this is wrong. <laughs> I think that this whole thing is belongs to a different pattern. I don't know that I trust that at all. I would go to the store and uh and look at it there I just I don't none of it is really making a ton of sense so I I don't know 
but the design is pretty cute. Tillery. Okay. Next up, we've got a dress. Yep, Nolita. Now we're getting into the <laughs> to the part where, you know, they probably were working on these designs like December, January, um, before we knew like the extent of the pandemic. And so these are obviously all the patterns that they had envisioned people would be making for the holidays. And yeah, probably not a lot of that going on this year, but it's always great to have in your pattern stash for whenever all of this gets sorted out. But this is one, one option is a one shoulder pleated shoulder design um, with a mid thigh slit. And I can't see if there's any seaming going on anywhere, but I'm assuming with a sequin fabric, probably not a lot. Probably not a lot. How is this even in the same? <laughs> Wait, what? How are these two things in the same pattern? That makes no sense. Okay, so this is a, gosh, this is a um, kind of like a, I don't know, a draped, neckline, center front seam, ruched skirt, full sleeve with elastic. <sighs> and then this is that other version um, with a, like the, the really beautiful, quite beautiful top actually, bodice, and then the skirt with the mid-thigh slit. So maybe that's how these two things are related. They just swap out the bodices. This is, yeah, this definitely has a waist seam, again, really long for her. Like, her waist is way up here. I mean, this is almost at her hip. So is it a drop waist? I don't think so. Not based on those other drawings. These are at the waist waist. Interesting. So, yeah. I don't really understand why these to belong with this one, but okay, fine, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> sounds good to me. Um, this is really pretty, and you can also make this pretty casual. Um, imagine like some kind of like crepe or something like that. I think you would see it in like a Banana Republic or an Ann Taylor. Um, you could make it out of silk, and that would be, you know, exceptional. Um, so it doesn't have to be like full-on gown sequins and all that. Knit pull-on dresses with two bodices and skirt variations plus sleeve. Yeah, okay. Um, yardage. All right. Two-way stretch knits, 50% cross grain, jerseys, interlock, velvet knits, and novelty knits. And then lining. Okay. Then you need two and a half yards of elastic. Oh, for this for the ruched skirt and for the sleeve. Um, wait, that's ABC, huh? Oh, two and a half yards for A, one and a half yards for B, and two and seven eighths yards for C. Where's the elastic, in the waist? I don't know. And then seam binding for A and B. Why do A and B have seam binding, but C doesn't? Something about this neckline. Okay. Two separate sizes. Here's your fabric requirements. I think that only the bodice is lined. For A, which was the ruched skirt one. Fully lined B and fully lined C. So, okay. A might also have you self-line. Maybe you self-line the bodice and no, I don't know. This is hard to figure out <laughs> just from looking at this. 
Okay. Well, there you go. No Lita. Are these, anybody in New York or super familiar with New York? Are these all New York town, not towns, but New York uh, neighborhoods? Delancey, like Delancey Street. Is it Nolita, like a nickname for something? So, Delancey is a romper, jumpsuit, and belt. This one is clearly made from like some kind of velvet. You've got a pretty deep V, center front seam, I think. You've also got shoulder pads, which I've seen this a lot in like the high-end luxury ready-to-wear um, where they've been putting like the really big shoulder pads back in, um, especially for like dressier garments. And then you've got your set in sleeve, elbow length, and then pretty basic, um, pant, a little bit of a flare here at the bottom. Oh, it zips up. Okay. I mean, that is... This is primed and ready for some kind of fancy holiday fabric. Um, so, because there's just so little going on. So the fabric really is what makes it shine. This one has a full-on notched collar and a belt with belt carriers. And then here's version. Now, they put this purchased belt on it, which... Makes me a little bit nervous because I don't know what they're camouflaging. If anything, it might have just been like, you know, we're going to put this belt on because it makes it like, it's like an accessory like a necklace would be. But they also might have put the belt on because the fit wasn't great. I don't know. And here she is without the belt. Okay, fair enough. Um, and the fit looks fine. Yeah, I think the fit of the pant looks really good. I mean, it is kind of fitted, but it doesn't look like tight. Um, so that's really good. I love these shoes too. They did probably photograph this either right as everything was shutting down, which is probably why they have the same model in every picture. But you can see here, her wa the waist seam fits her just fine. So those other ones just must have like really crazy long bodices. This is not the best. Probably again, the fabric was super hard to work with, which I can see why. Let's zoom in on some other ones of her. That's pretty much the same. Oh, that's it. There aren't any really good ones. This is, I guess, from a side angle. A little bit better, but with the belt on again. So you can't really see the um, waist seam from the front. But here are our line drawings. Again, pretty plain all around. Um, this collar adds a little, collar and belt really add a little bit of something to this last version but all these others are are ready for your fabric to be the star of the show i mean it also might be something that would be a really great pattern to get to fit um almost like a sloper would and you have like one really great well-fitting jumpsuit pattern that you can use to make a bunch of different variations where you can change the sleeve, you can change the neckline, you can change the shape of the leg. Do you know what I mean? Like, but you have a very well fitting base to base all that off of. So that's something to keep in mind for, for Delancey because it is so plain. It is almost like a, I mean, this is like a, sloper. This is what a sloper would look like. Okay, yardage, crepe, velvet, stable knit, corduroy, crepe, yeah, like a midweight crepe maybe, velvet, stable knits, like ponty, okay, corduroy, corduroy, 
I don't know about that. That seems like that would look really weird. Maybe with the collared version. And then it does have some lining. And then you need half inch shoulder pads and an invisible zipper. And then for the view seat, you need one buckle. Not a lot of fabric um, all around, considering everything. So that's good. And then lining for everything is one yard, which makes me think only the bodice is lined. And then finished bust line measurements, and you have different ones. Wait, A, B, C, D. No, there's only A, B, C. So I don't know where this came from, but we don't have a D. So I don't really know what that is. And there's also no explanation for why you would have different bust line measurements for the three patterns. So I'm also thinking this is not correct. I don't know where this, I don't know about this. I wouldn't trust that if it were me. Um, okay. There you go. That is McCall's fall. Um, McCall's fall 2020. I'm going to go back to find this, uh, uh, let's see here. How did we get to that? I'm going to find the lookbook is what I'm looking for. And I know we went here and then the lookbook. I do like the lookbook. Okay. Now let's make it nice and big. Okay. No problem. Okay. So McCall's fall. What did you guys think? I... I, I know we've had some collections that are just not great. And this is not a collection where I love every single pattern, but I do quite like a lot of them. I just don't necessarily need them in my life right now. Um, but I do appreciate the designs. I appreciate the styling. I appreciate, you know, the sort of the vibe that this is that this is giving off. Um, and I'm interested to hear what you guys think. So let me know in the comment section below what you think of McCall's fall. And that's going to do it for me today. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you very soon. Bye.